This is the Gacken EX kit. It's an electronic experimenter kit that was released in 1976 in Japan. The EX kit is actually a series of different kits, and the unit we have in front of us today is the EX150. The EX150 was so named as it allows you to build 150 different projects. In this retrospective article by the original manufacturer in Japan, we can see the EX series originally contained six different units when launched in 1976. This started at the EX15 and progressed through all the way to the EX150 that we have in front of us today. One unique feature of the EX series is it allows you to buy in at any level and slowly build up your system by buying add-on parts. Here we can see the EX15 is turning to the EX30 by adding some additional wires and blocks. The EX30 is turning to the EX60 by adding some additional blocks and an IC amplifier. The EX60 converts to the EX100 by adding a few more blocks and wires. And the EX100 is turning to the 120 by adding a microphone. Finally, you can see the EX120 is turning to the 150 by adding this voltmeter and some additional blocks. These parts were available separately as add-on kits. In 1979, Gacken released the EX181, and this was the final release in the EX series. The EX181 includes a synthesizer module and allows you to build an additional 31 circuits. As before, it was available as an optional upgrade for existing owners. Following on from the EX series, Gacken released the FX series in 1981, and I'll return to one of those units a little bit later in the video. While the EX series was originally produced for the Japanese market, as you can see, my EX kit is in English. And that's because the Gacken company exported the EX series across Europe and the United States. For example, in Germany, the EX series was co-branded by a company called Lindy, who you might remember for manufacturing computer peripherals in the 90s and 2000s. In the United States, the EX series was available under the Skillcraft brand, and here in the UK, it was co-branded by a company called Electronikit. In the UK, Electronikit had made a name for itself as a provider of electronic hobby kits, such as these kits here under their chip shop brand. These kits require soldering, and I have a few videos showing me assembling these particular units on my channel. I'll provide links in the description. However, the EX series offered a lower barrier to entry, being based on the reusable, solderless Denchi block concept. My particular EX150 must have been produced around 1980, and this is indicated by the sticker in the top left of the box here. As you can see, the Electronic EX series was chosen by the Design Council for display at the Challenge of the Chip exhibition at the Science Museum in London. I actually have the souvenir guidebook from that exhibition just here, and we can flip through the book, but unfortunately there are no references to Gacken or Electronic Kit in this particular book. It is an interesting picture into how we believed technology was about to change our lives back in 1980, and some of these predictions did indeed come true. There are some really nice illustrations and explanations inside the book, but there is at least one notable error. If I flip through to this page here, we can see an example of the Science of Cambridge MK14, which was the precursor to the ZX80, ZX81, and the later Sinclair ZX Spectrum. But the error that I was referring to is actually in this picture just here on the right hand side. This image is labeled as the main part of Intel's microcomputer, and the back of the book is attributed to Intel. However, this slide is actually produced by Texas Instruments, and as you can see by the read-only memory section here, it's actually a single-chip microcontroller. I instantly recognized this particular slide, as the die in the picture is actually a TMS-1000 series chip, and regular viewers of my channel will know that particular chip comes up quite frequently, and it may make a cameo later in this video as well. But without further ado, let's get inside the EX150. As you can see, the kit is co-branded by Gacken, who produced the kit in Japan, and Electronikit, who were their UK distributor. Incidentally, this area here is provided to store the four AA batteries that the kit uses when the kit is not in use. As it happens, I've gone ahead and pre-installed those four AA batteries, and that's because the kit is provided pre-assembled based on figure number 45, as you can see on this label just here. So let's turn the unit on and see what circuit 45 actually does. Yeah. 
So as you could probably briefly hear there, this circuit is actually a radio. Radio circuits were always the most exciting to me. The idea that we could communicate with people wirelessly over long distances just seemed magical. So I think it's really great that Gacken ensured that a radio was the first circuit you got to play with when you unboxed your EX150. But of course, you can build much more than just a radio with this kit. Underneath the clear transparent cover, we gain access to the individual electronic blocks. These range from fairly simple wire link blocks, which contain nothing but a single wire soldered across the terminals, to resistors, capacitors, transistors, and even larger blocks like this transformer We also have the uniquely shaped IC amplifier block, which sits in its own special recess, but wasn't included with some of the lower end units. The EX150 also introduces the analog meter, and in lower spec units, this would be replaced by a simple blanking plate. Underneath the main unit, we have the included user manual documenting 150 circuits. as well as some of the original documentation. Including this advert for some of the predecessor units, including the SR3A. More about the EX series, including how you can build up from the EX15 all the way through to the EX150, using the various add-on sets as described in this table just here. And we have the parts and warranty list. As I mentioned when we were looking at the Japanese article, it's possible to add a sound synthesizer to the EX150 to produce the EX181. I was fortunate enough to come across a boxed version of the EX system synthesizer part. This is the synthesizer block itself. And as you can see on the front, there are a number of configuration switches and space for a PP3 9 volt battery. While the main EX series circuits use four AA batteries to run from six volts, the Texas Instruments sound chip inside the EX series synthesizer block requires nine volts to operate. The synthesizer part comes with its own manual containing an additional 31 circuits. When we add that to the 150 in my kit, you can see we arrive at 181 circuits of the top of the range EX181. If we briefly return to the magazine article, we can see that after the success of the EX series, Gacken released the FX series in 1981. The FX series was a significant redesign and introduced two new units, on the left, we can see the FX computer, and on the right, the FX clock and melody kit. Now, I've never come across an English language version of the FX clock and melody kit. However, I am fortunate enough to own a brand new inbox FX computer. This is the Gacken FX computer. Underneath the clear transparent cover, we can see an arrangement of the familiar Denshi blocks. However, the computer is dominated by this large red block in the lower right of the unit. If we take a closer look at this main computer block and flip it over, in the lower left we see a Texas Instruments TMS-1100 CPU. This is the same microcontroller that we saw in the Challenge of the Chip book earlier in the video. If you'd like to learn more about the FX computer, I have a whole video dedicated to this topic. In the article, Gacken notes that they produced half a million of these kits in the period between 1976 and 1986 when the kits were discontinued. The article notes that these kits were widely exported and were popular across the globe, and highlights that due to nostalgia, in 2001 Gacken released a reissue of the EX150 for the domestic market. However, between 1986 and 2001, the EX series wasn't entirely out of production. 
In fact, it was possible to buy an English language version of the EX60. As you can see on this page from the 1995 Radio Shack catalogue, it was possible to buy a rebranded EX60 kit as the 16 Explore Electronic Lab under Radio Shack's own Science Fair brand. The somewhat unusual block-based system was available from the 30th of October 1994 for $39.99. The description notes that it requires two AA batteries, however I suspect this is in fact a catalogue error. Gacken most recently revisited the Denshi block concept with their Adult Science MOOC, or Magazine Book, volume number 32 in November 2011. Gacken's Adult Science combines a substantial cover item with a nice magazine exploring the concepts related to that product. Volume 32 was a retrospective on the Denshi Block system and included the Electronic Blocks Mini. The Electronic Blocks Mini contains 25 full-size Denshi Blocks. Powered by two AAA batteries for just 3 volts, the kit replaces the incandescent lamps seen in the 1970s and 80s with modern LEDs. Yet, with some careful engineering, the kit still manages to include a fully functional AM radio circuit. The electronic box mini is normally contained inside this large box on the left-hand side, and on the right we have the included magazine. If we flip through to this page here, we can see the Japanese article I've been referring to throughout this video. I'll provide a scan of this article both in Japanese and a translated version for your perusal, and I'll provide a link in the description. The magazine includes lots of details about how the blocks work, some interesting projects for you to complete, and it includes the substantive manual for all of the 50 circuits that it's possible to build with your electronic blocks mini. So I hope you've enjoyed my potted history of the GAC and Denshi block system as it relates to the EX and FX series of electronics kits. I hope to revisit these kits and explore some of the circuits in the various manuals in future videos. But for now, that's all I've got time for. So I hope you found this video interesting and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.